Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of Cooking with the Frisbees, but this is our June 9th garden tour, and a lot has been happening down here at Little Acorn Farm, I can tell you that, um, including my new hat, you like that? So, the last garden tour that we had was May 22nd, and as I said, a lot has happened, there's a lot of growth going on. Um, we're actually going to harvest some squash today and I think some peas as well. Um, once the heat came up and we got the irrigation right, things just really started to bloom. You know, I will tell you that we need to, we ordered some fertilizer. Um, we did a soil test. And I posted that, I believe, on the, our Instagram page, Cooking with the Frisbees. So you can always go there and check us out. Um, nitrogen deficiency because some of our plants were yellowing and we go ahead, went ahead we bought one of those test kits on like amazon.com we tested it and it was nitrogen deficient but everything else was fine so we ordered some blood meal because that's a great source for that um, we just got that today so we'll be applying that and then we also got some organic liquid fertilizer that we've applied as well that that showed some good things happening so I'm gonna without further ado I know you guys are probably excited to see what's going on um, this is us gardening in Georgia zone 7b we were in uh, Cumming Georgia and we're trying this was the expansion of Little Acorn Farm if you guys had followed us and we're just trying to see what works what doesn't work so that hopefully as people watch this they can learn right along with us so without further ado come on let's go take a look see what's been going on Okay, so let's start as we usually start. Um, we're at the top here. You see Bentley down there. He likes to help weed. Um, we're going to stop over here at the herb garden. Let's see what's going on over here. Uh, not so much herb garden, but you see everything is doing very well. You look over there, we've got the basil. That needs to be trimmed back a little bit, I would say. Um, the parsley, the onions. What was happening here, I found out things weren't doing that well. They were struggling. And I went over to my irrigation system that I have set up over there and I'll, I'll go over there so you can see just how I have it all set up. It's on a timer, but the nozzle was loose. We've got three zones um, that we're irrigating down here and this is zone one and the cap wasn't screwed on. So the water really wasn't going through the line. So my fault, um, I fixed that. Ooh, a bee just went by. I don't know if you guys heard or saw that, but shows we got pollinators in the garden. Um, so let's head on down. We've, this is our first trellis here, and take a look what's going on with these. Ooh, I love the cucumbers. They're growing up this vine. We're starting to train them. Um, you can see we've got a cucumber there. Um, there's a couple of cucumbers. They're hard to find. It's so funny how they pop up, but you can see one there and then there's one behind it um, they're on the lower edge but there's a lot of flowers and Beth and I have sat here and witnessed all the pollinators since we start we planted flowers amongst our beds and things are just really starting to take off really there's some radishes here we planted some of our extra peppers here those seem to be doing well um, I just have to show you this Bella is just in her glory. What are you doing up there, Mama? <laughs> she's, like, she's like, don't take any pictures of me. So let's go on over and let's take a look at uh, our zucchini and our squash bed. Now uh, you can see you're first going to say, wow, that has really come up. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about uh, the leaves were yellowing. And we thought at first that they were just getting too much water. But that's not don't think that's what it was we did some research on squash and zucchini and found out that these because they're such a leafy plant they take a lot of nitrogen out of the soil so when we did the test with our kit that we purchased the nitrogen was almost depleted so that's why we went ahead and bought the, the bone meal and that that should fix that but I want to come in here so you guys can see Wow look at that that looks good. We were worried at first we weren't getting any zucchini. Um, and we found out that we had a lot of male plants or male flowers. So we started to worry. 
And as we kind of looked online and did some research, folks were like, don't worry about it. Usually you get a lot of female flowers and then the, or male flowers, but the females will catch up. And what they're saying is it's just easier for the plant to produce a male flower. Now come over here and look at the, the squash. That's just doing so good. I think we're going to harvest these tonight. Um, we were thinking about making them get a little bit bigger, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and harvest some, not these. These are much too small, but you can see what's happening in here. And we're just so excited about that, that there are actual squash in there. We're very excited about that. Um, but we're trying to figure out, you know, is it, how should I say this? Do you harvest them small and are they more flavorful or do you let them grow and get bigger? Not sure, but that's something that we're going to figure out and we're going to share with you. This is where our beans and our ambrosia melons are. I call this, I think bed number two is what I always call this one. And look at the phenomenal growth that we've experienced. Um, I'll take you a look at the beans first. These are doing good. You know, they're starting to climb. Um, we thought that we got these purple vining beans, but we didn't. They're, they're supposed to grow on the bush here. So if I move this, see, you can see these purple beans really starting to flourish in there. Um, you're supposed to wait until they're about six inches long and as thick as a pencil. But you can see we got beans, not ready to harvest yet. Um, and the funny thing is, you know, Beth did some research on it and they says as you cook them, they'll turn green, which is funny. Uh, look at Beth's sunflower. How tall has this gotten since the last time I did a garden tour? Let me go from the base. It will go on up, 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 up. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk for crying out loud. I mean, this is almost, up here is probably six and a half feet. And this thing has just shot up. And then I'm so excited right now about the ambrosia melons. And I don't know if you guys can see just the sheer number of flowers and how this has climbed this trellis is unbelievable. And every day that we come out here, now that it's kind of hot and humid, you just see more and more growth. It's like they grow six inches every day. I don't have any fruit, but when we come out here and kind of do our morning coffee walk, we do see quite a few um, bees in these flowers and pollinators, but don't see any fruit yet, but we're excited about it. And then look at the peas. So let me back up here so you guys can see this. Look at the peas. There's no way they were that tall the last time we did the garden tour. These just grow so fast. And you get in here so you can look and see. There's one, two, three, four, five. They are all over the place. We're so excited about that because, you know, everybody says when you grow this type of stuff in your garden, um, it's so sweet and it doesn't taste like anything that you can get in the store. And all of our stuff, for the most part, I would tell you, is organic. The one thing we struggled with, with our peas, is aphids. Um, so we've been using a lot of neem oil um, to try and correct that situation. Uh, but there's a lot of peas. And then look at all the flowers. Look how tall this has gotten. I mean, that's above the trellis. We may have to cut that back a little bit, but we only get a little bit of time with that anyway, um, because once it gets too hot, the peas won't grow. Let me swing around here and show you the tomatoes. Lots happened over here. We lost a couple of tomato plants. The last video I showed you, there were some sickly plants and I'll show you what we've done, but look at the Roma tomatoes. The last time I was out there, there were none to speak of. And now we've just got Roma tomatoes going, um, waiting for them to ripen. Um, when these were the two sickly plants, um, and we read about it and it said it was like a shock. And we thought it was from the heat one weekend. It went from like 75 to 92 and we came back 
and they were shriveled, but Beth cut one way back. And just in the last few days, it has started to grow again. So we're gonna give it a shot. And we've got a, a long season here in Georgia, so who knows? We, we may get a secondary crop, but lots of flowers, tomatoes growing, loving that. Look how tall the plants are getting. Yeah, look how tall. See, the same thing happened over here, but we cut this one back. Starting to shoot up. This one has one little tiny little sprout on the top, but I don't think it's going to make it. These are a little weak. Um, this one looks a little leggy. This is, a, I believe, a cherry tomato plant. But, you know, we did a good job, I think, of trimming them, keeping the suckers off of it. They look a little bit leggy. We're definitely we're going to go ahead and put some nitrogen in here as well. Um, to kind of bush them up uh, and the fertilizer what we're using is going to help pep them up as well but I'm not upset I mean this early you know June 9th you're talking about it usually we weren't getting any tomatoes for a while hi Bentley boy <laughs> he's such a cutie um, and then my rose bush thank you Bentley for leading us over that way we threw some extra peppers in here that we had pepper plants and let's see, do we have a pepper? Oh, ho there's a pepper. But it just doesn't like when I do that. There we go. There's a pepper there. The roses, this, if you notice, if you remember, was a much bushier plant. Um, but we were told to, that there's only supposed to be four or five main canes and to cut these, the other ones off. So I went and I, if you can see here, I cut them back um, and I started kind of training as they said to go horizontal and then the offshoots will start to grow up vertically and I think this is going to be beautiful when this gets up over this entire trellis it's going to be great but trimming it is what needed to happen otherwise what they're saying is you would only get um, blooms at the top and we don't want that we want this whole trellis but you know this is year one so we'll see this broke in the storm that we had yesterday, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna have to come down here and snip that. And then let's head on back to the back beds, which the fertilizer that we used, I'll have to show you what the fertilizer was. Um, Argro or something like that. I'll, I'll have to see what it was, but these were looking a little weak back here. And then we put that fertilizer in and it's just the first week that we've used it. The strawberry plant, are looking good we only got one strawberry off of there but uh, there's some more Beth planted some flowers you see our radishes look at that there's a radish down in there I can never tell on the camera there's a nice little radish growing down there our eggplant this is something we were a little worried about but now we're starting to get flowers on our eggplant and we've got a little control over our ant festation problem which we had a lot of red ants in here and that's what you see like the dog food container over there I put holes in the top and uh, put cream of wheat in and they crawl in and it does work they crawl in there we swing around look at our pepper plants so we got oh there's a bell pepper oh aren't you just pretty so we got bell peppers after we put the fertilizer on these were looking a little leggy, but they've really started to green up and do wonders. So I'm pretty happy about that. We always have to remind ourselves that <laughs> the peppers don't really come. Oh, well, look at the jalapeno over there. Yeah, I think we did the right thing, definitely. I gotta show you, uh, I'm gonna walk over here to, show you what I did over in Beth's greenhouse as well not going to open the door but I went ahead and put that stone in there it was so much better than that mulch and when I was digging in there oh my god I think I got arachnophobia for sure but uh, <laughs> there were just families of spiders living in there so that's kind of the the lower part of Little Acorn Farm Again, you can see that things are doing really well. We're really pleased. I would tell you the, 
uh, the one thing that makes us nervous the most is when we look at yellow leaves and we look at things and we look at our plants and they're a little bit leggy. Um, I think it's just my advice to you guys would just be to exercise patience. Put flowers in your beds so that you can bring the pollinators, you can actually see them. And just be patient and understand that this is going to be a learning experience. I mean, I look at some people online and, you know, they're planting like 250 tomato plants. And I don't see the need to do that for us, but I, I certainly understand it because you're going to lose some of your plants. I mean, that's just what gardening is all about. And you have to you have to live and learn that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, walk up to the potted plants. And I think you know that we have some vegetables that we planted in our potted plants up here. And I'll show you what they're all about. So here's our tomato plant, one that's in the pot. You guys can see if I zoom in this see if it's going to let me zoom yes it does i'll figure this equipment out sooner or later that is about three feet tall we went ahead and put a cage around it the one over here this is my little buddy and i'm just <laughs> we're not gonna give up on him he has been this size since we got him we neglected we didn't plan him he stayed in his little seedling pot for like two weeks we planted him, he started turning brown. We gave him some very strong fertilizer and now he's starting to make a comeback. So we're gonna keep up hope for that one. Our blackberry potted plant, that's Bella's pool sitting over there. She was in it the other day. It's getting hot down here. Our blackberry plant, um, it's doing well. I didn't, I don't, I didn't really expect any fruit from it this year, but and when you come over here, I think we have our first blackberry. Let's see, do we? Yeah, we do. You can see that in there. Doesn't really want to focus, but we've got our first blackberry, um, one. And it, it, you know what? And we had to manage our expectations. It said you're probably not going to get a lot in your first year, and that's okay. Um, a rose bush, it looks healthy got a beautiful flower on it that one their flowers take a while to open and then this pot we just had a hosta that was being kind of drowned out by another bigger one so I said you know what let me put it in a planter I just I love the way this does it, it it's a it's an alternative I guess I would say to having the big garden but you can still put them in pots and it looks nice and decorative around our, our downstairs deck that I've got to do some power washing so I really shouldn't show you guys that I'm kind of ashamed of it so and we'll sweep back there's little acorn farm back there well, I guess it's all little acorn farm and I've got plans for winter time we're gonna do some bigger building so the last thing I guess I'm gonna show you let's head on upstairs I'm gonna show you uh what's happening up here with our box up here that basically it's just mint but when i have my little cocktails at night or i'm or i'm out here doing an episode of cooking with the frisbees and i'm grilling it's a great place to come over and just snap off a top piece of uh some mint and help my drink taste a little bit better so we've got that going on up here as well let me turn around and show you that again this is our little mint box it's supposed to be self-watering. Believe me, we get enough water in Georgia. It's so humid right now. Um, this had been sitting out for a while. These are basil plants. Beth had kind of given up on them, but I said, no. Nope. So I just threw them in this box and we've put some of that uh, water soluble, high density, high concentration fertilizer to uh, see if it'll pet back up. It's not dead. So obviously there's hope. And then you can see God, I just love you just rub your fingers on this and ah, it just smells so good and just give you a, one last little shot this little acorn farm down there things are growing things are doing well peas squash harvesting uh, looking forward to it 
So that's our garden tour for June 9th, 2021 here in zone 7B in, uh, I would guess we would a little more, not central Georgia, but not north Georgia. It's coming Georgia. If I look it up on the map, it's about 35 minutes north of Georgia if there's no traffic. But, you know, we're infamous for our traffic here. So it's probably more like an hour on any given day. But that's kind of the tour. Beth is going to do some harvesting. I'm glad I got through this before that rain came in. We have had nothing but thunderstorms all week long. So... Everybody, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, there'll be another episode of Cooking with the Frisbees. I think what I've got is Australian lamb on the rotisserie that we cooked at the dock. So thank you guys for watching. Any comments, any questions that you have, I'll be happy to answer them. Just like Cooking with the Frisbees, when we're cooking, we're learning. Now we're gardening on Little Acorn Farm, we're learning. But I just want to say thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great week.